Most people that love their lawns pay the least amount of attention to their parkway strip. Even if their parkway strip looks really, really good, mine's not there yet, but even if it looks really good, it's kind of the last area that lawn advocates, lawn lovers, spend their time on. Why is that? Because people walk by, their dogs come over it, uh, they walk on it to get into their vehicles. For whatever reason, it's the last thing that they spend their extra time on. Here's my parkway strip. My parkway strip right here is very thin buffalo grass. This buffalo grass was seeded in September of 2023, and I'm anticipating this buffalo grass overtaking this area and filling in really thick, kind of like this. So if you imagine this lawn right here, how thick that is, I expect this lawn to look just as thick by summer of 2024 without really doing much of anything. Let me add a few sprigs right here. Notice that my stolen runners that are coming over, I am not going to be trimming them for at least the next month and a half. And I'm going to take all of the stolens and throw them into the thin spots uh, to use as sprigs to fill this section out. But if you're a longtime follower of this channel, you know that 15 months ago when I moved into this house, this spot was raised up off the ground. So the soil was not right here. It actually went up and over, and I had a kakuyu stand here in the parkway strip. Now, I'm going to step across the street really briefly to show you what that looks like. This is my neighbor's house. These guys are awesome. I love them. But notice how high off the curb the grass is. This is kaikuyu grass. There's a kaikuyu runner right there. This is like three inches off of the ground, but it's firm right there. All of this is essentially thatch and soil, and I cut all of that out. I cut it out over here so that the lawn could be flush with the sidewalk and the exterior curb. It's taken four or five herbicidal applications to rid this area of kakui grass in Bermuda along with weeds. And at this point, I still have a little bit of poa annua because I couldn't put a pre-emergent down in the fall because I was seeding uh, buffalo grass. But other than some of the poa, the buffalo grass is really going to take this over. The problem is, is I stopped right there. There's my house. That's where I stopped. But all of this, I have yet to do. So as we come over here, now, you notice that I've done a lot of life state applications to kill everything off but this grat or this dirt space is still mounded up too tall so there's a lot of extra dirt here that is unnecessary so if i were to take a lawnmower over the middle of it it would scalp in the middle because it's pavement level curb level and then it mounds up in the middle so here in the month of march 2024 i'm going to be leveling this out and then putting down new buffalo grass seed. The plan here is to bring the buffalo, buffalo grass seed all the way over past the fire hydrant. Now, ideally, we'll get all the way over there to where the dirt stops and the green starts. But realistically speaking, this is kind of my mark right here, this old sprinkler head, which is not used anymore. Because this isn't used anymore, I can like dig it completely out of the ground. So over here, last year in the late 2023 i actually put brand new sprinklers in the ground uh in this section now i have capped off sections right here that i can expand and i will continue to do that so basically i'm going to trench down and work all the way around i have these sprinkler heads set only what is that five feet apart from each other yeah they're very close together and that's because the parkway strip is only five feet wide. So each, uh, each sprinkler head has a five-foot arc. So it's going to spray to the next head, around to the curb, and then back to the next head. And that's what each one of them does. So it's kind of an expensive install because i got to buy a lot of joints and sprinkler heads and sprinkler nozzles. 
But in the long run, when I run these sprinklers in it, I can't use the Irrigreen sprinkler over here because it's too skinny. So I have to use these regular ones. In the long run, I'm going to use a lot less water because each one of these five foot, 80 degree, uh, 180 degree radius sprinkler heads uses very little water per minute. So if I have a whole bunch of them set up, I can cover the entire area with one irrigation zone with no overspray whatsoever and have plenty of water to cover the whole thing because my actual irrigation can supply almost 15 gallons per minute. So over the course of the past 11 months, I glyphosated this area uh, three or four times. And since I applied the grass seed down, I have put uh, a couple different applications of weed killer down. And unfortunately, because I did it early and I knew I was doing it early, I still have stuff like this popping up. So I still have undesirables growing up that I have to hand weed right next to the desirable buffalo grass. So I got good buffalo grass, good buffalo grass. That I don't want. This oh annual I don't want. So that'll go away on its own as well. But I have to be out here hand weeding. The rest of the area, I should say I decided last year to not seed early. I just did the uh, the difficult thing. At, um, the difficult thing is to leave it as bare dirt for an extremely long period of time. And every six to eight weeks or so, I come back through with a non-selective herbic herbicide and I kill whatever happens to be still growing. There's still stuff there. The thing is, after 11 months, we've gotten through most of it. But over there where I planted, it only took six months. I still have a lot of stuff that I have to have to hand weed. To do this really well, you have to let it sit as bare dirt for an uncomfortably long period of time. Now, you can tell where I have applied glyphosate multiple times because this is where I stopped applying glyphosate. So over here, I killed everything off with glyphosate with uh, Roundup summer in the spring of 2023. And I think I reapplied or late spring or early summer of 2023. I did add a little bit of glyphosate there in the fall. You see, everything has come back. The vast majority of this is California burr clover. So this is burr clover. Uh, normally in a lawn, it doesn't look bushy like this because you're running over it with lawnmower all the time. I haven't been doing that over here. So I'll be coming through here eventually to do a burr clover purge with herbicides, most likely, before everything goes to, goes to seed. At this point, things are starting to flower, but not very much. It's mostly just leaves and foliage. In the meantime, all of this is what we're left with, is what I'm left with, after having managed this area to kill all vegeta vegetation off for 11 months straight. Now over here, we removed a gigantic evergreen hedge. I paid a company to do that. Um, that's not something that I wanted to do, nor did I have the means to get rid of all of the material. But I do ha now have a whole bunch of weeds growing in the area. So I've been hand weeding this area. And maybe a little bit later this year, we're going to be installing a small uh, retaining wall right here. Uh, and flattening this out. It's still going to be a hill, but it's going to be less of a dramatic hill. You see how steep that is. So that's going to flatten out ever so slightly into a retaining wall so I can clean up this side and then we can landscape this area. Uh, in a different video, I discussed what I kind of wanted to do up here underneath this palm as I hand weed most of the... Uh, uh, the straggler or kikuyu grass up here and grassy weeds, uh, I'm going to be putting in a block of corn. Corn, for those of you who don't know, corn is in the grass family. So not only does corn act exactly like grass does, but it is a perfect example. So it's a physically large example of a normal small grass plant. So if I want to show what happens to grass 
I can use corn. It's almost like a magnifier. I can show corn and relate it to the grass. I, I feel like it'll be a good illustrative option for this uh, YouTube channel. And then our family can eat corn. So, you know, killing multiple birds with one stone. This has been a big project of the fall. This was, I should say, a big project of the fall. Putting in this buffalo grass, it doesn't look uh, especially impressive right now. But I guarantee you that it's a lot of work to do this. <laughs> and I'm kind of dreading uh, the next stage because it's also going to be a lot of work. In the long run, definitely going to be worth it. And I'm certainly happy that I did the work over here. And I would encourage anyone else to figure out ways to incorporate buffalo grass into their lawns as well. Because buffalo grass requires roughly a quarter of the, of the water that regular lawn grass uses. Quarter. Like a quarter. One inch of water over here, you only need to put a quarter of inch of water over here. 100 gallons, 25 gallons. That's what I'm talking about. So in drought restriction areas where you have full sun exposure, buffalo grass needs to be considered. Now, with all of that said, I haven't made a lot of videos in the 2023 season about the back of my lawn, but I'm going to go back there right now and show you links up here in the corner, definitely down in the description, and links in the description to other videos in this update series.